Hello and good morning to you. This is Pip Coleman coming in to do the Find Your Soul show. And today, as it is the last Thursday of November, we are going to finish off our conversation about writing your own story and living your own life and doing the things that you want to do and stepping into your power in terms of what it is that is most important to you in your life. And that includes moving towards a vision of what it is that actually excites you. Maybe it's a job that you want to do. Maybe it's a relationship that you want to create. Maybe it's a health, you know, way of being that you'd like to be. Maybe it's about a spiritual a spiritual growth that you'd like to have. So I'm going to show you, today we're going to talk about uh, one of the processes that I teach in my Divine Alignment Coaching Program, which is called the Post-it Process, as in post-its, post-it notes. <laughs> and so it's quite an interesting little process and it's usually towards the end of the coaching process, but I thought that it might be helpful for you today to help you get a little bit clearer on how you can write your own story. So say hey from wherever you are, um, pop a comment in the box, say good morning, uh, let me know how you're feeling and uh, we're going to get into this conversation about writing your own story. So if you haven't watched the last few weeks, um, Every month I do a different topic and so we kind of can dive a little bit deeper into that topic over the course of the month. So the last few months, few weeks, we've been talking about writing your own story in terms of seeking pleasure and that it's okay to seek pleasure. We've been talking about journaling and actually writing your own story, like actually getting it down there on paper and having a legacy that you can leave for your family uh, and, and yourself and the, and as I say, this week we're going to talk a little bit about the things that light you up and how we can actually bring more of those things into your space. So particularly if you're wanting to um, change your, oh, sorry, <laughs> particularly if you're wanting to change your job, change your relationship, uh, improve your health, improve your spiritual connection, any of those things we can you can use this process that I'm going to talk about today, the post-it process. So, hey, Christine. Hey, Kerry. Nice to see you. I'm just, um, hopefully I can see your comments today because it's nice to be able to connect and converse with you in these lives. Uh, not always possible with, you know, <laughs> the way that things work. Oh, there we go. Yay. I can see myself there. So hopefully I'll be able to see some comments today. So let's talk about the things that you used to love to do as a child and the things that you were good at. So if you'd like to write in the comments below as I talk, please feel free to, to write in the comments below. The other day I was talking to a client of mine and we were talking about her wanting to change her job. And she'd been working in a particular industry for a really long time that was something that she had been um, doing because she was good at it, but she was feeling tired, exhausted, didn't want to work in that industry anymore. Anyway, as part of the coaching process, we realized that one of her strengths was caring for people, that that's something that she's really good at. However, when she does too much of that caring for people, she gets exhausted, feels resentful, and doesn't want to do the job anymore, right? So what we needed to do, what we need to do is find something that she could do as a job and that would not, that would use her strengths, but not exhaust her, okay? So because her natural inclination was to care for people, she, and is to care for people, she can do that anywhere, in any job, you can care for people, you can help other people, right? So what I was getting her to do was think outside the box a little bit in terms of what sort of job would she like to do. So we went back, we went back a little bit and we did some brainstorming around the things that she loved to do and the things that she was good at when she was a child. And so a couple of the things that came up were 
create some creative things, some things around um, uh, like scrapbooking and, um, you know, uh, like flower, things with flowers and um, nature type things. And then the other thing that came up was a, dis a love of books, a love of reading, a love of um, doing that sort of diving into that amazing world of archaeology and ancient civilizations and those sorts of things. So that is an interesting starting point, okay? Uh, because that then gives you possibilities in terms of where you can focus your attention, remembering that she's always going to be caring for people because that's one of her strengths, one of her learned strengths, one of her things that she learned as she grew up. So she's going to still do that no matter what. But if you put yourself into a the role of a carer and your strength, your personality is to care for people, you're gonna be not only caring for people in your everyday life, your friends, your family, everyone, you're also then gonna be caring for all your clients and everybody else. You're, can you see how that's like too much caring for people? And I don't mean that you shouldn't be compassionate or whatever. It's that that whole concept of let's let's do things that make you feel passionate and alive and excited in your life, and not overuse the things that that make you tired that 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 do um, drain you. Okay, so you can see where I'm going with this. So if you want to write in the comments. Um, the things that you that you love to do and I see that Christine great okay awesome so playing with Barbies is is awesome because it's all about imagination like I loved playing with Barbies when I was a um, like a child as well that um, you know creating those scenes of like you know what did they do and my sister and I used to um, create we watched a, a show a documentary about Pompeii and so for like, feels like years, we would play Pompeii with our Barbie dolls. So they would be dressed in the togas and they would have like, you know, these adventures and then the volcano would explode and then we'd all run away from the volcano. <laughs> it was a little bit weird, but also that was something that really got us inspired. And it made me wonder sometimes, now I wonder if we actually, if the two of us actually had a past life in Pompeii and that's why we were so fascinated with this thing because we played Pompeii for a very long time um, and so that's really interesting. Um, love learning about the body, that's fantastic. So learning about the body is, that's an amazing starting point, okay? So we've got two really good ideas there about where we can go in terms of your job or what you do in the world from those two things and I'll, I'll give you some ideas in just a second and obviously if you did coaching we would dive a little bit deeper if you um, worked with me personally we would go a little bit deeper um, so Kerry great reading fantastic lots of things that you can do in terms of reading um, that's great and there was something else I don't know Kerry did you write something else down the bottom there that I missed can only see four comments that's okay reading great okay so let's um, in terms of the post-it note process the idea first is to brainstorm about all of the things that you were good at or love to do so um, I really like these ideas that you've put in here because it gives me a starting point in terms of the examples that I'm gonna give so you get yourself some post-it notes I love the ones that are colored where are they these ones, these ones that are like colored. So you've got green and pink and yellow and whatever. And what you do is you write on each of the post-it notes one of those things. So you write reading, you put learning about the body, you put um, playing with Barbies, right? On the stamp, on the post-it notes. And then um, keep expanding on that. So as you're thinking about it, you might do a little session of like, I don't know, half an hour or so where you just brainstorm and you stick them and then you put those post-it notes up on the wall somewhere. So if you live with lots of other people, 
you might like to put them, I don't know, on the, in your room, um, on the back of the door or um, somewhere where, you know, no one else is necessarily going to comment on them if you want to keep it private. Um, but the idea is to put them up somewhere where, like in your bathroom or in your toilet or somewhere where you can look at them every day and start to get inspiration from them, okay? So the idea is to get inspiration and so if there's anything else, feel free to add some extra things in there of like ideas. Once you've actually got um, a few things up on the wall, then what we're going to do is around those things. So you might like to put Barbies in orange, reading in green, and then um, learning about the body in like yellow or whatever, you know, different colors. You've got your sti normal sticky notes. And then around those, if you've only got like a few things that you feel you're good at, like you might have been good at sport or you might have been good at um, writing or you might have been good at making friends or you might have been good at um, talking, playing friends. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I was like, oh, I have this feeling about friends. So um, you, once you've got your main thing, then you use the same colored sticky note to, to think about the types of jobs or the types of companies or the types of businesses that would be cool to work in that are around that concept. So let's brainstorm those few um, those few ideas that you've just put out there now. So learning about the body, that's an interesting one. I'll talk about, um, yeah, that's really cool. So um, what are the businesses or um, industries that you can work, you could work in or start researching around the body, okay? So there's lots of different things, lots of different ways that you could go, including things like medicine, including things like massage, including things like naturopathy, including things like um, the, the study of the brain, psychology, um, including things like sports physiology type of things like that, physiotherapy. Um, nursing, great, exactly, that's, that's a good one. So all of those types of things fall under the banner of jobs that you could do or careers that you could have or passions that you could be involved in. A, even a trainer, for example, you don't have to be qualified. These don't have to be things that you need to be qualified for. You could be a trainer at a footy club. I know one, a person that I know who um, does massage as a volunteer at a footy club and they aren't trained as a massage therapist. They just want to be involved in the footy club and they want to wanted to learn about the body, wanted to learn about the muscles. And so they were basically being trained by the experienced people who are doing the massage to do massage and to learn about the body and the muscles and that sort of thing, to see if that was something that really inspired them to move into a potential career in that space. The other thing that you could do, for example, is with the bar, let's talk about um, the reading. We'll go back, come back to the Barbies because that's a really good one. But if the reading one, for example, that was one that my client said that she really liked reading and she and it was it was reading everything but one of her passions was reading about um ancient civilizations okay so kerry if you have a particular type of book that you like reading let me know or um you know topic that you like reading about because that will help define it even more so my friend my client, <laughs> my friend client, liked reading about ancient civilizations. So what she was thinking about in terms of around her sticky note about reading, she had things like working at the museum, the Melbourne Museum, because guess what's at the Melbourne Museum? A whole bunch of old stuff and ancient civilizations. So she could read all day long about that, okay? What else um, you could be, there's archeo span actually you could move into archeology. span You could look at, you know, photography and travel type things. You could look at journalism. You could look at um, places that let you read, like a publisher. You could work at a publisher and read for a living. 
that's what they do. They have people who read manuscripts and then help with like deciding what books they're going to publish. So, and the step, the steps to get there are, you know, there are steps to get there, but the point, and that's what I can help you with as well. But the point is getting excited about where you would like to be working that is in relation to and gets you fired up and passionate. You can still use that strength of caring for people if that is what you we, we, decide, we discern that you are good at, but you will actually be moving more towards a space of passion and a space of living your life's purpose and a space of writing your own story if you tap into what you were naturally inclined to do when you were a child. So th these are really cool um, examples that you're giving me because it's there's so much scope there and you might think of new things as well. So remember, you've got your, your orange sticky note and then around that orange sticky note is more orange sticky notes about the types of places that you could work or companies. Um, I'll give you an example of mine. One of the things that I really liked was um, I loved um, natural products. I like using things that are natural on my skin. And this is not from my childhood. This is just when I was looking for jobs at one point. And I really loved um, using natural products, not putting any chemicals on my skin. And so I was thinking about, I'm really passionate about that. I'm passionate about the environment. And so I was looking for companies that are supportive of that you know, the World Wildlife Organization, um, the Body Shop, um, you know, uh, Australia Zoo, you know. So I was looking at lots of different companies that I could work for that also had the same ethos as me, the same um, values, the same beliefs, okay? Because you could be working in an organization that is right up your alley in terms of, let's say, nursing, for example. You could be working in nursing but you might not like the system. You might not like the values and the beliefs of the system. You might like to nurse people and care for them, but you might not like the structure. So how can you pick up the, the um, strength, the um, ability of nursing, the caring part, and put it into a different setting? Because maybe you love animals. Maybe you've always loved animals. So why are you working in an office? You know, let's put you in a place where there's lots of animals. You could work at the zoo. You could work at the, a vet. You could work at um, a sanctuary. You could work in um, an organization that saves the whales. You could work at a place called, there's a place down here on the island that does whale watching tours. You could be working in the office of a whale watching tours place and then you're still around and in the space of your passion, which is animals. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's about looking outside of the square a little bit in terms of where can you put your efforts and your focus rather than just going to the thing that you know all the time. Because the thing that you know and the thing that you've done maybe to survive, maybe you've been sort of moved into that space over the years, you've just I don't know, gravitated towards a job in admin or you've gravitated towards a job in nursing or you've gravitated towards a job that, yeah, you can do it, but it doesn't light your fire, yeah? Now, let's talk about the Barbies because this is something that I'm passionate about too. <laughs> so how can you bring a passion for playing with Barbies and... In, and um, and that creative imagination space, how can you bring that into your job or your day-to-day -day life? So let's think about that. Um, you can put some suggestions in under here for the other people here. Feel free to give people suggestions. Um, that's a great way of doing things too. So one of the things that I always think about when I think about the Barbies is it's all about playing, okay? It's all about imagination. It's all about, you know, that whole conceiving of something and diving into that world of creativity. So working at a theater, actually being in theater, uh, puppets, um, cartoons, 
uh, drawing or getting involved in, if you're not really a drawer, you could like graphic design, uh, working for a company that, uh, you know, like the Melbourne Theatre Company or um, art, getting involved in art in terms of art galleries. You know, there's, um, what are all the different ways that you could bring that energy of play and imagination and creativity and drama okay one of my one of my sisters loves drama she loves to do to create drama she loves organizing plays she loves putting on shows she loves that whole process of like you know presenting and playing like that so yes excellent so you might actually find that you can bring that energy into organizing a singing group or organizing a drama group or having a, a business you could create a business around that whole concept of you know adults being creative um, I know another lady who does art classes for adults she does art for kids as well but she she, she does so well doing these art classes for adults because she started to do that diving back into art again and loved it and so she started telling other people about it and they started to do it with her so working with children fantastic Christine and and animals there you go Kerry so the there's lots of different ways that you can work with children there's lots of different ways that you can work with animals and it's about doing that brainstorming and the post-it note process helps you to see it up on the wall okay and the idea is to put it up on the wall and leave it there and then as you walk past it every day you go oh my god I just thought of another place I could work or you see a TV show and someone's doing the job that you would love to do um, I remember there was a show I think it was last Christmas I think it was New Year's Eve or something and they all the people were um, on the Great Barrier Reef and there was all these scientists. It was when the spawning of the coral happened and there were people live, they were live streaming the people watching, the scientists watching the coral, you know, doing its thing. And these people were so excited and they were like, the coral is spawning. Like, and I just remember thinking, wow, those people are doing the job that they are born to do like how excited are these people to watch this once a year thing and they probably are scientists in you know marine biologists and things like that in and doing other things but that event was super exciting for them because that was their passion they they're passionate about it um yeah, I was watching a show about whales, a documentary about whale, the secrets of whales, it's called, um, on my smart TV. And they were talking about um, all the different types of whales and what each of the, each of the different cultures of the whales are. And that, so they were sort of, you know, the belugas do this and the, the blue whales do this and the sperm whales do this and the, the orcas do this. And it was so fascinating. And there was a guy who photographs whales for the National Geographic and he travels all around the world and photographs whales. That's his job. How cool is that? So if if you have a passion, if you have a thing that really lights your fire, there's ways that you could be doing that thing. There are ways. And the only thing that's stopping you is you. That's that's the truth, you know. We are we have so many things that we could be doing in the world. We aren't, this life, you know, is, I don't believe that this is our only life. I believe that we have many lives. And this life is for living. This life is for doing the things that light us up. So how can you do more of the things that light you up? Look for things that light you up to do. So this is your your challenge, your um, suggestion for the week um, until we meet again to put those ideas, those those things that you were really good at down in, on paper, on your post-it notes and start thinking about the types of um, the types of jobs that you could do or the types of industries that you could be involved in 
And then a very good question, Christine, how do you move past the resistance? That is where the practices and processes that, that I teach in my Divine Alignment Coaching Program, that is um, where meditation comes in, that's where tapping, EFT tapping comes in, um, that's where the, the, that's where the work is. But you know what? You need to have something to move towards rather than just running away from what you don't like now. Because one of the things about the human brain is that if we are running away from something, if we're like, I hate my life, I hate what I'm doing, I, I hate my job, I hate my relationship, if we're just running away from things, that's good leverage in terms of I'm not happy with this thing over here. But if we have nothing to move towards, then you will always be drawn back to the old thing because there's comfort in that, okay? Because you don't have the fire and the passion to move towards the thing that you love. And if you don't know what it is that you love, that's even more resistance. So the resistance comes up when we aren't clear on where we're going because there's fear in that. There's fear in the unknown. There's fear and resist resistance comes up when we are um, uncertain about what's going to happen next. But if you're super clear about where you're going and what you're doing, it's way easier to move towards that thing. If you're so excited about the idea of working with whales and that is like your so passionate about it and you can't stop talking about it and this is the thing that you love, then nothing's going to stop you because you'll be so inspired, yeah? However, I also understand that there is resistance and there is fear and there is all sorts of things around, um, you know, blocks and, and things that might come up from our past. And so that's where doing a, the coaching program like the Divine Alignment Coaching Program will give you the tools and the skills, some new tools and skills that you might not have tried before to help you clear any blocks that you have, um, dissolve the fears, do that forgiveness work and move into a space of allowing rather than in a space of staying comfortable in your discomfort. So, oh good. I'm glad that makes sense, Christy. <laughs> so good. We can talk more if you want to. Just send me a message. So that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. And um, please feel free to give people suggestions on this feed if you have ideas of how they could work with children, how they could work with animals, how they could work with, um, you know, connecting people like, you know, um, there's lots of different ways that we see the world and so it really helps if you have other people to help you with that reframe, okay? And let me know how you go with the post-it note process. I would love if you do your post-it notes and pop them on the wall and take a photograph of it and then you can either post it in this um, feed. Ooh, you can either post it in this feed, you can send it to me privately if you want to do send me a private message with a picture of your post-it notes and how you're going with your colored post-it notes they don't have to be colored they can all be the traditional yellow if you want to and um, because it really helps sometimes to have somebody to be accountable to and it helps us to um, move forward with our processes that's what coaching is all about too is if you have somebody who says to you, send me a picture of that exercise that you've done or, you know, show me that you send me a text message when you finish that that question that we were, um, you know, journaling on. It really helps because it means that you move forward and you actually take action because that's the other thing is if you're not taking any action, then you're not moving forward and you're just going to stay in that stagnant, static um, feeling like you're in a rut space and so that's where coaching is really helpful too because we can help you to move forward and um, not get stay in your stuck place so a couple of things coming up 
Um, glad that was helpful to you ladies who, anyone who's joining us, please feel free to share your aha moments and your suggestions underneath this video. Next month, we're going to be moving into holiday hacks for December. So ways to do it your way, new traditions, um, ideas for having a happy holiday, your happy holiday, okay? We all know that holidays can be hard, that Christmas can be hard, that New Year's can be hard, that family gatherings can be hard. So we're gonna talk about some holiday hacks um, and ways to make holidays easier. And that's what we're gonna do for December. And then in January, we're gonna move into the space of your vision for 2022 and uh, talking about the law of attraction and also the retreats that I'm going to be organizing for next year around um, the full moon and the new moon. And the so there'll be full moon and new moon divine alignment retreats coming soon um, down here on Phillip Island. So hopefully you're down here if you want to come down to, to Victoria to, the, to Phillip Island next year, I'm looking forward to doing that and um, and keep an eye out um, for new things coming soon. Um, if you want to go to um, join my mailing list, my email list so that you get first dibs on any new things happening, you can go to pipcoleman.com and go to the contact page and then sign up for my newsletter and you get some free gifts some uh, Archangel prescriptions and an ebook, and uh, that way you can actually uh, learn how to use the energy of the Archangels as well. And I look forward to seeing you next week, and I'd love to see your post it pictures on this feed, or you can send them to me privately. Yay! It's been fun. Thanks, Kerry. Thanks, Christine. And, and I haven't seen anyone else making any comments, but I will um, jump in and um, let you know, give you some feedback if you need feedback. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. And if you want to do some coaching, now's the time. It's a great time to get into coaching because the holidays, I tell you, they can be a challenging time. And you sometimes we need somebody to talk to and help us to move through this um, very emotional time. Um, and if you don't have anybody to talk to and you need someone to uh, raise your vibration, help you to, to shift through this space, then give me a buzz. I would love to talk to you. Okay, take care, have a lovely week. This is Pip Coleman, and I hope that you find your soul very soon. Bye for now.